Hello, my name is Lee Clark. This is a talk about my recent printmaking series entitled Human Stain, made during the lockdown 2020. <clears throat> this talk has been made especially for Platforms Projects 2021 in Athens, Greece. The foundations of my practice are grounded in printmaking. I can never just start printing without being led by an idea and in this sense I behave like a designer waiting for the next brief. The concepts that lead my work are often born out of a shock or a jolt to the system. This moment occurs when I am lost in researching a subject and I discover a fusion between the three elements of personal experience, engaging context and print. In this work, Human Stain, I had been studying online shaming during the first lockdown in 2020 and had been analysing the methods of online activists in both left-wing and right-wing organisations, from the actions of the alt-right to social justice campaigns. This coincided with a long period of homeschooling in the time of the pandemic where we had to teach regular awareness sessions with our young children to help them understand the effects of cyberbullying. In the background, we listened to the news of celebrity suicides brought on by unbridled gossip spread through unpoliced and uncensored social media platforms. I looked at the dangerous actions of casual clicktivists who substitute discussion and education with public shaming and cancellation. At a time when grace is needed to allow people to learn and grow, those who seek to support movements with toxic malice only create more damage. Of course, the calling out of racism, inequality and environmental irresponsibility within public institutions is imperative and I have signed countless petitions myself. My concern is how are everyday people expected to learn or improve if they are shamed and how is attempting to defame somebody with no qualification or evidence progressive. I got thinking about the similarities and differences between online shaming and printmaking. Online shaming is concealed behind a mask, is anonymous and quick to process and disseminate. Printmaking is revealed by the machine, made in communities, often signed by the maker and disseminated after much thought and preparation. I decided that I needed to consider a manual equivalent of idle online shaming something as crass, basic and accessible. With limited access to studio facilities and means of printmaking, I looked for possibilities in local shops that specialised in, in essential goods. I found car sponges and using my own body weight and lithography ink in my studio, I got messy. I considered my actions in various modes, the school fate tradition or throwing wet sponges at teachers, harking back to the more sinister stocks in the town square, the sponge's intended cleansing use of removing dirt, the sponge as a simple printing tool, and the sponge as a fast learner. I thought of the character Delphine Rue from the Philip Roth novel The Human Stain, imagining the moment she regrets her own act of shaming. Using the heavily inked up sponges, I attempted to depict her figuratively, immersing myself in her sophistication and regret. Enjoying the process, I continued to create representations of online shamers from various shaming websites. I also considered those that were shamed and thought of them as static and immobilised, frozen by false accusations and gossip. Reflecting back on John Ronson's book, So You've Been Publicly Shamed, he discussed Dante's Inferno and how Satan was depicted as a giant demon frozen in the centre of hell. This, he believes, was an early metaphor for the feeling of shame, a frost or an icy fear. Ronson mentions accounts from long-term prisoners who locate their lack of empathy to early experiences of humiliation and shame. 
Common phrases in everyday life like my blood went cold or a part of me died seem to make perfect sense in this context. After making a group of these monoprints, I considered how audiences contemplate art and visually digest and store physical images. The speed in which online gossip moves is so rapid and is often forgotten about very quickly. In his book, The Madness of Crowds by Douglas Murray, in the chapter The Impact of Tech, he refers to a text made in 1933 by James Thurber called The Day the Dam Broke. It recalls an incident in Ohio when the whole community of his town ran away after there was a rumour of the dam breaking. He reported, Inside of ten minutes, everybody on the high street, from the Union Depot to the courthouse, was running. A loud mumble gradually crystallised into the dread word, Dam, Dam has broke. The fear was put into the words by a little old lady in an electric, or by a traffic cop, or by a small boy. Nobody knows who, nor does it now really matter. 2,000 people were abruptly in full flight. Go east, was the cry that arose. East away from the river. East to safety. Go east, go east, go east. 2,000 people ran for no reason, all based on panic and a rumour. The next day, the city went about its business as if nothing had happened. But there was no joking. It was two years or more before you dared treat the breaking of the dam lightly, and even now, twenty years after, there are a few persons who will shut up like a clam if you mention the afternoon of the great run. Actions of shaming are not supported, for example, by Black Lives Matter, and Patricia Coulours, co-founder of the movement, has stated, Woke shaming is really unfortunate. If we are trying to build a movement to save all of us, we need to be able to invoke faith in people who are new, people who are learning and who are willing to grow. There is a difference between people who are bigots and people who are trying to figure out their way in this. We should have patience. Recently, the phrase woke shaming has been hijacked by the tabloids and outspoken celebrity pundits to denounce social justice and ethical campaigns. It seems that at both ends of the spectrum, some have forgotten the importance of discussion and collaboration to find positive solutions and ways forward in an ever-changing world. Within proactive and positive causes and campaigns, there are those deploying malicious hatred within a safe echo chamber. When projected outside, the slander becomes divisive, widens opinion and creates em enemies. These images are imagined, figurative realisations of anonymous trolls and people whose reputations have been stained by smearing and defamation. In my installation of monoprints, they are in a group, communicating together, facing one another physically and working as a team. This process has allowed me to configure the hidden and bring together conflicting forms in a contemplative space.